Now, as a capstone to my position, I I believe in neo reaction so we can defend both monoculture and multicultural communities and make them ordered and thriving. I believe that groups change over time and that interracial marriage is part of that, but also that people have the right to preserve their own groups and use whatever weird demarcations they need to to ensure those boundaries. And if they sound silly to me, like only wanting to be around redheads, that's not for me to decide. And it seems to, it seems to me that I would want to give people space to explore these ideas. And for this reason, and for the reason that uh, these things are being used by our enemies to fire people, I'm very, very skeptical at using this as a moral standard, especially since I don't see it imposed anywhere outside of the 20th century hmm. across Christian history. Well, I just don't, I just don't understand. What's the principle of policing boundaries from your point of view? That's, that's just my question. How do you, how do you know when a line that's being drawn in the sand is something that you don't want to draw or have anything to do with? Um, well, I, I like how Searle talks about this. Um, he says that with respect to language that we typically have a core and then as you get away from the core, the boundaries get fuzzy. And so I don't think you can draw a set of lines that are have crystalline purity and universal cap, um, application. The boundaries at, towards the fringe are always fuzzy. But I think the point is that everyone draws political boundaries. I can't tell you how many times I've been told I'm not on the right, that they can hit me because no one beast to the right doesn't include me because I'm apparently a leftist. And so... That's one of my reasons why no enemies to the right. Look, if I'm already your enemy and I'm on the right, well, then I'm going to hit to my right because I'm already your enemy. Um, and so I think that when you're policing boundaries, that the goal of policing boundaries is you have to have a movement. Your movement has to have boundaries, because if it doesn't have boundaries, it just includes everyone. And so like the liberal atheist who's transgendered shows up and says, yeah, I want to join. Well, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, so how do, you, how do you know? How do you know those boundaries? Yeah. Is it yeah. the direction you're heading? Uh, I, I think your that you have to have a... Well, no, I think there's two two tests. One is you have to have an, an, an epistemology. Um, there's epistemic boundaries. So, for example, if someone tells me that they're going to adopt the postmodern epistemology, pfft, out, right? Anything the postmodernism or critical theory, gone. Because those... The so you don't discuss it, you just boot people. Well, no, 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 no. I will debate people who do that. But in, in my political movement, when it actually comes time for action, we're not bringing in postmodernism or critical theory because that's my enemy. My enemy is postmodernism and critical theory. And those are the things I'm going to go at. When I say postmodernism, by the way, I mean philosophical postmodernism. And by critical theory, I mean the neo-Marxist tradition leading back to the Frankfurt School. If you're using those epistemologies, you're my enemy. I'm going to attack you and I'm going to bring blistering attacks on your epistemology because those are the two epistemologies which broke the left. There was a time when the political left in the United States, when Democrats were sane, and they're not sane now because they got broken by those and, methodologies. And atheism is not your enemy this way? Why is atheism not your enemy this way? The way that postmodernism is. Postmodernism and atheism are different. Atheism isn't in itself. Yeah, but why is atheism not, not your enemy Christ. in this way? In this, what? just the way you said. Well, apologetically, it is. And in religious context, if, so, if, I'm, if I'm forming a religious community, I wouldn't allow atheists in my religious community either. A atheism is political. There is, and this is a critical difference between us. There is no difference between religion okay. and politics, and there never has been. Atheism is a political endeavor. This is what's driving it. The death of God in politics is what's driving this. And this is all a consequence of that. Uh, if you want to look for the roots of this thing, don't look in postmodernism, look in atheism, look in secularism, oh, look in stuff like that. Okay. Mm, are you meaning secularism with a capital S or are you meaning secularism with a lowercase s? Because there's a I'm meaning all of it. Because secularism with a lowercase s just means <laughs> that we're not going to have an officially sanctioned state religion. Because if you need an officially sanctioned state religion, that's secularism. If, you, if, if, you're saying, if you're saying that we need it officially, then, then no. If what you're saying by secularism is the cultural movement in which um, uh, the underpinnings, the transcendental underpinnings which are held in place by God are removed and that creates a problem, then, then there's something there. But atheism... But, but, atheism but, has but, political but, consequences, correct? It has political consequences, right? Sure. 
It is therefore political. Therefore, the same things you're saying oh, about no, Pokemon no, 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 apply no, to no, it. No. Yes. Lots of things have political consequences which don't make them primarily political. I can make all kinds of decisions which might have downstream political consequences that doesn't make them political. Because if that's if, that, if atheism is political in that way, then so is everything else. Having a child is a political decision. Getting married is a political decision. Being heterosexual is a political decision. What job I yes. get is a political decision. Because all of these things have downstream decisions, have downstream uh, uh, consequences. That doesn't mean we make politics the exactly, primary yeah. But that doesn't mean that we make pro politics the primary arbiter or the primary standard by which we judge things. When I said epistemology, You're... the reason is because epistemology, truth is at the truth is pre-political. Truth comes before politics. If your politics comes before truth, it doesn't matter what your politics are. They're going to go off the rails. Epistemology is at the root of everything. And if you're going to use broken epistemologies, it doesn't matter whether you're Christian, atheist, Buddhist, or Muslim. You're going to wind up going crazy places because your epistemology is wrong. Now, and atheism is not a broken atheism. epistemology. Is atheism atheism not a broken epistemology. epistemology? Atheism isn't an epistemology. It's, how how can atheism not affect your epistemology? You're right, it's more than an epistemology, but how can it not affect your epistemology? Because an atheist, like like Searle says, can agree that there are absolute standards of objectivity even if he's not able to ground them. There's a separate there's a difference between epistemology and ontology, which is at the I mean, that was the mistake of, of, of the logical positivists, was they thought they could reduce everything to facts and logic. But Searle doesn't think that. Searle thinks that there are transcultural standards and there can be objective standards. Now, you might say, well, how does he ground them? And he would say, I don't know. We're going to have to figure out a way to do that. But he can, if a guy like that comes along and says, I agree that there are objective standards, then yeah, I can, I can work with that guy because he's, now he might not have a way of grounding them. And I would hammer him for that in a religious context. But in the political context, as long as he's willing to grant that there are objective standards, I at least can work with him. But if someone brings in postmodernism and critical theory, they're ipso facto saying that there aren't any um, transcendental standards or objective standards for epistemology and that you can't work with. If I came to you with a postmodernist and he said, well, I have some weird theory that I'm not showing you off screen that shows you how you can have objective standards and still have this epistemological school, then you'd work with them. Then he wouldn't be postmodern. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's like you say, See, I, 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 this, is, this, is, this is why, I mean, like, this is why, I, I kind of agree with you, Vocal. I kind of agree with you. But I mean, like, That's this like seems saying, arbitrary. I think, like, you know, I, lots of people who are atheists don't actually. Very few people who are, are atheists act like they're atheists, and this is something that I bring to a lot of my uh, European friends who are technically atheists. They certainly don't act like they're atheists, and I would say that they're functionally not. Uh, but, but this is this is this is just the reason why I don't think that you can just take these nominal ideas and erect boundaries around them so firmly. You know, I'm I'm perfectly willing to work with a postmodernist as long as I think he's a good person and the proximate political goals are are to a good end that will help humanity and help humanity's relationship with God. And the fact that he has contradictions in his worldview, you know, will work on those, I guess. That's kind of my opinion. Hmm. Um I don't think that's gonna work because I mean, we saw what happened with the right post or with the left. Postmodernism broke that easily. I mean, postmodernism was able to sneak in and just be like bang, 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 and rip it to shreds. It had no problem. Postmodernism Dave's argument is that everything. That's what it does. It's inherently deconstructive. Well, because it so was politically it expedient. So it was. It was expedient to the bureaucratic system. Yeah, I, I see postmodernism and atheism in its modern form being more or less different stages of the same fundamental death of God process that was kicked off in, you know, I think it had earlier origins, but was kicked off in the Enlightenment and then came to fruition in the 20th century. And because I see them as sort of extensions of each other, I try to be charitable to both. Hmm. And, you know, I extend the charity to kind of crude nationalism if you want to call you know that stuff in the accord affair right I, I i want to be you know no one has the answers to these questions yet and people all want to rebuild communities and so i, I think that the my enemy as i see it is a system and is a lack it's an absence of belief it's an absence uh, of wholeness 
And then there's a there is an industrial system that keeps that absence in place that that you know we call ma- the managerial the managerial total state, as uh, I think R. M. McIntyre would call it. But but that's how I see it. And I, I don't think that 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 these these philosophical labels are, are useful as means of excluding people, unless they correspond to a distinct action. Or, you know, unless they advocate for an action that is in itself immoral. And living around people is not immoral. Uh, marrying certain people rather than others is not immoral. Uh, I guess belief, not believing in God is immoral, <laughs> but hmm. but I, I think, you know, I, I try to be charitable even in those cases, right? If it doesn't have an immediate impact. And I think that when you bring in postmodernism and critical theory in that worldview, you're bringing in diseased minds, as Douglas Wilson says, and diseased minds make for lousy decisions. They make bad calculations, and you want to keep those people out of your leadership, and that's the reason why you punch right. If he wants to vote for me, fine. That's great. But the problem is when you bring in the postmodern relativistic, when you bring in their view of language, when you bring in their epistemology, you create serious, serious problems for yourself. And part of the problem is, I think, in all of this is, Everyone's trying to define the boundaries and decide, because there's two different boundaries that you've been shifting back and forth, and I don't know if you're doing this on purpose or not, so I'll just bring them out. There's what are what they? I'm going to do. What are they? Who will I do politics with, and who will I have discussion with? Who will uh, I formally align with in politics is one question, and who am I willing to have a civilized conversation with is another question. And those are two separate boundaries. My boundaries for who I'll have a discussion with is much wider than my boundaries for who I'll have a, who, who I'll do politics with. Uh, yes, but then there's also the boundary of who you just like attack by any means necessary by going after their career and stuff like that, right? Like that's I've that's an additional that boundary beyond that. But I don't. But I don't. Okay. Go okay. Great. But we know we are we're discussing this in the con, right. and that other was where people. it came up. Right. I mean, right, they, right. we can't divorce no enemies to the right from the origin of it okay. as a discussion over somebody so who has. Okay. So let's call the second boundary the discussion of, let's say, the people who are kicked out of the discussion are the people who are kicked out of the institutions and therefore fired from their jobs. Right. So there's the political boundary, who will do formal politics in, and then there's the other boundary of who we're going to kick out of polite society by firing them. Those are two separate boundaries. Would you agree? Yeah. Of course. I mean, there are all separate boundaries, I guess. I mean, I'll have a discussion with anybody. I probably wouldn't discuss like legitimacy as something like child. Don't say it. 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 Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Let's say okay. phrenology. Something we <laughs> phrenology. All know. Yeah, phrenology. that's it. That's it. That's it. Phrenology. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, well, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> God, this is so hard to talk about taboos and can't talk about taboos. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the uh, like, yeah, sure. I mean, but like politically, I mean, but isn't that totally dependent on the thing? Like, I don't believe in, so I'm, I'm against separation of church and state, but like, if you believe in separation of church and state, but you know, you're, you're against the, the transgender insanity, I'll lie with you. Like there's feminists, like there's turfs that, yep. uh, that are against like this trans stuff and I'm allied with them, but they're total progressives. Right. So I guess there's abortion. certain tr- on- on, on a particular on a particular issue, you might make, you might say, look, I'm going to vote with you on this, but in terms of of, of anti woke political movement, you might say to certain turfs, and I have, look, you've accepted the critical theory and postmodernism, just not when it catches your thing that you like, and so I can't ally with you, and I've told some of them that, and I won't ally with them if they're bringing the postmodernism and critical theory. I don't care that. Well, you're anti-trans, good, but that's just because when you're, the revolution. So you're voting with them. Your thing. What does ally the with them mean? If you're voting with them and you're 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 coordinating a political campaign, but you're not allied with them. Oh no, I would I would support a campaign. I wouldn't attack them for their support of my campaign. I wouldn't, for example, if one of these postmodern okay. feminists said, I'm going to vote for you, I wouldn't say, no, don't vote for me. I wouldn't do that. But in terms of she said, look, I want to ally with you and I want to work with you on this, I would say, sorry, man, because you're bringing in all the assumptions that I'm attacking. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you you can't vote for me, and I'm not going to intentionally push you away from voting for me because of that, because of that one thing. I will accept your vote on that issue. But 
when it comes to actually working a movement build now, which is a lot thicker of a concept than just you happen to be giving me your vote on Bill HBC 515432, which bans males from women's locker rooms or whatever it is, that much thicker concept, no, I'm not going to bring in a turf who accepts postmodernism and critical theory because that's just a person who is only upset because the revolution that they're fully on board with accidentally ate the thing that they like.